Okay, so my name is Ben Knight. I'm the Director for Research and Teacher Development at Cambridge University Press. And just before we get into the, uh, the, the, the talk about the research, I just want to introduce some general points which are behind the research that was done. So I think most of us are excited about the potential for technology to help us as teachers and to help our students as learners of language. But I think we're also, many of us, skeptical of a lot of the claims that are made by some of the technology solution providers, which give the impression of automatic benefits and solutions. And so, as a leading organization of developing those online language courses, We've got together with another organization, Laureate International Universities, to see if we can bring together independent research into online language learning in a way that makes it accessible to educationalists around the world. So that's our aim. Let's see if we can get independent research into one place or one portal that you can access in a, in a, in a digestible form so that you can make your own judgments about some of the opportunities. So we've created this network, which we call the Online Language Learning Research Network, OLREN, to its friends. And the objective of that network is to support research, independent research, into online language learning. And I encourage you all to go to this site, olren.org, and you'll find there a lot of links to uh, articles, papers, and experts in this area. Also online events. In addition, and you can become a member, you just register, it's free, for the moment at least, it's free, so register now <laughs> before, before we put up the, you know, the price to millions. Now, one particular initiative that we have is that we want to support people in the area of research, and we're looking for researchers who can help us provide surveys of current research in particular areas. So if you go to the site, you'll find a page which is called Support for Researchers. And you click on there, and it'll tell you about an opportunity. If you're in the area of research, there's an opportunity for you where we're looking for academics to provide digestible surveys of research on particular areas. And those particular areas, these are the 11 areas that we, we are targeting at the moment. So if you're a researcher or someone who's interested in research in any of these areas and you think you have the capability to deliver a survey in this area, there's a form there for you to fill in explaining what your credentials are, and it's, uh, we'll pay you, we'll pay you to, to do this survey, good money, so, uh, and this is part of our support to researchers out there. But also the output of that will be useful to other researchers as well. So part of this whole program is how can we bring research, which is independent of the solution providers, to the educationalists? And that's where I'd like to introduce Sergio, Sergio, Sergio. <laughs> Sergio, Sergio is uh, an example of a researcher in the field, teacher researcher, who's carried out research in his particular area uh, in Brazil, and he's going to explain what he found as an independent researcher. Do you want the clicker? You're okay there. Okay. Is it, is it, can you hear me? Okay. You guys all right? No, no. Ooh. Oh my god. First time presenter, first time I attend. I guess it I guess it shows, right? Uh, no. Um, okay, well, first of all, of course I have to thank Cambridge University Press, Ben Knight, uh, Laura Patsko, Simon Borg for all the help and support and feedback uh, in you know, sponsoring my coming to IATEFL 
coming to, to Glasgow and, and doing all this, this research. So thank you guys so much. All right, so um, the title of my presentation, Learner Perceptions of Online Self-Study. Uh, if, if you check the program, it says what's, what works in online learning, right? So uh, I chose the word perceptions because um, uh, it's, it's a, a common theme in, in EOT, I, I, I guess, uh, that searching for uh, empirical evidence is quite hard. And Penny Err, in a recent video with the uh, uh, Cambridge University Press site Better Learning, uh, she, she says that um, we have to look at what, what um, teachers what, what teachers do and what teachers see in the classroom, what learners, um, what learners see, what they experience in the classroom, and, and, and get these accounts as evidence uh, uh, and work with these accounts as an indication of empirical research. So I thought of that when I uh, set this, this project, that I would work with uh, my learners' perceptions uh, and, of course, with uh, theoretical uh, with a theoretical basis, a good theoretical basis. So uh, the topic is, of course, uh, an investigation of their perceptions of activities done online with a focus on the institution's online component, right? So uh, activities done online, not just the, the, our, our own institution's online component, right? So everything else they did uh, beyond uh, the, their assigned homework in the online component of the institution, okay? So why, why research it? Um, well, I've, I've, been, I've been in the field for more than two decades and uh, I've always been really, really interested in academics and, and, and the reading and the, the basis and the theory uh, and uh, as I, I'd say, probably most of you here, we've been through uh, the PPP. You guys remember the PPP, uh, the reflective teaching. I, rem I, remember, I remember Donald Freeman in Sao Paulo giving a lecture about reflective teaching. Uh, Scott Thornbury and, of course, uh, Teaching Unplugged, uh, uh, you know, uh, the What's the book again he wrote? Uh, uh, Grammaring and Grammar? Scott, Scott's uh, book, and, and Teaching Unplugged, of course, with Luke Meddings. Uh, so uh, those were sort of my uh, references for a while. They still are. Um, and um, task-based learning, of course. So going through all these uh, ups and downs and, and these phases and, and these cycles, um, I've always been interested in the mechanics of learning, so when I was offered the chance, the opportunity to research, I really, I loved it. Um, well, uh, Luis Otavio Barros, he's a, a teacher, materials writer in Brazil, he's done some research on, on this improvement in students' production. Uh, more recently, uh, uh, there was a, a survey he did online with hundreds of teachers and most teachers agree that students seem to be producing better language nowadays. And we were trying to speculate on uh, what, what, would, what would be the, the cause of that, right? what would be behind that. And when planning this project, I thought, could this be this online exposure they're having, right? So this uh, extra element besides the classroom, the, 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 the book, the course book, this online element could probably be helping in this development. And of course, nowadays, with all this talk of AI and we you know, losing our jobs to, to robots, and we had um, Sarah Mercer this morning showing a, a robot in, in South Korea. Um, so again, uh, I, I, to, to tell the truth, I'm not really that, that uh, worried, but anyway, I wanted to investigate, right? So as we're talking about online, an online element that would be, are we still relevant? How relevant are we? Um, so the context is, uh, of course, 
big metropolitan, cosmopolitan city, Sao Paulo. Um, I, I had worked, I worked for 20 years for one of the uh, most reputable institutions in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. And I, I was moving to a new job. So I, I did the research at Illumini, right? Um, so that was 2016, this whole year, uh, doing the research. So there, there was this element of a transition to a new job. I had all this background in a different institution. And um, so I, I, the way I saw the, the, the practices at my new institution, I had a fresh look, right, in a way. So 25 young adults in high-powered jobs. Uh, I taught uh, downtown Sao Paulo uh, at the headquarters of Santander, the, the bank, and Itaú, uh, another one of two of the biggest banks in Brazil. Uh, they were uh, intermediate to upper intermediate level. Uh, lessons were in company. I actually taught in the bank. I had to go through security every day to get in the bank. Uh, that was fun. Uh, <clears throat> and um, most of them, I'd say probably all of them, but uh, we could say they were digitally, digitally literate. And half of them worked in the IT department. So they, they worked with computers, they were exposed to computers almost all the time, right? Um, I did some reading, of course, a bit of reading there. Um, Nikki, Nikki Hockley, you guys probably know her. So she says that, okay, traditional teaching, of course, works. But with face-to-face -face and online, it works better. Right? Hattie and Yates, in a study, uh, OECD report from 2015. Again, online is stronger when supplementing. So not substituting, but supplementing online as, as an addition to traditional teaching. So the tradi traditional teaching is always there. In most studies, I, I, probably all of the studies I, I read, the importance of traditional teaching, the importance of the teacher, the importance of guidance, the instruction was fundamental. Uh, Annie King in uh, Cambridge, University, Cambridge University Press uh, publication of 2016. When, when online, when doing the, this additional, this, uh, um, when working outside class, students can watch, they can they can read, they can uh, read texts, watch videos, listen to passages as many times as they would like. And they may not feel inadequate, so not like the, the, that student in class who may want to listen one more time and you may be pressed for time and not able to do it. But while online, they'll be able to do it as many times as they, they wish. So that would be a clear benefit. Uh, Means at all, <clears throat> in a study for, from 2013, um, okay, we have positive results from blended learning, from blending online and traditional teaching. But do these results really come from blending or, or from the additional resources, the additional time students spend uh, exposed to language? Right. Uh, Tomlinson, in a British Council publication from 2013, um, saying that learners usually don't get enough exposure to language uh, in traditional teaching. They don't get enough exposure. So blending might be a solution to this problem. Right? You offer students an opportunity, an extra chance to be exposed to language. So the study itself, uh, as part of the study, I, I wanted to gather as much, uh, as much data, as much knowledge, as much theory as I could. So throughout this year of 
2016. I, I read as, as, much, as much as I could get my hands on, <clears throat> right? Um, and on top of that, uh, in my everyday classes, I devoted special attention to the work done outside class, right? I, I guess we always do. We always uh, check homework before class. We check homework. We, we assign homework. We worry. We plan it. <clears throat> but uh, throughout this year, this, this had, a more import, had more importance in my delivery, right? So uh, almost every class, we had informal interviews, right? So I wouldn't like sit down and say, OK, let's talk about the online component. No, I would check it through the homework. I, I already knew who had done, who hadn't done the homework, because we, we had reports, right? Uh, the homework online, I mean. Uh, so we could, I could gather information from, from their report on what they had done. So was it easy, was it hard? How hard was it? What parts were more useful for you? And um, with that, I would collect some, I would take some notes. And with the reading and these notes and interviews, I started to uh, make a questionnaire, prepare a questionnaire, which initially I thought of doing it online, of asking them to do it online. Then I, I was afraid that not all of them would do it. And Dornier, in, um, in one of his books, I forgot now, he, when he talks about questionnaires, he says that um, uh, questionnaires are, students don't really engage in, in questionnaires. They don't really engage with the topic when they're doing a questionnaire, when they're uh, filling in a questionnaire. Uh, their contact with a questionnaire is like, it's too short. So they don't really have time to engage with the topic when filling in a questionnaire. So I thought, okay, I'll print, I'll print these out and I'll ask them to do this in class. So I had all of them do it, so I could really gather like the 25 students filled it in. Um, finally, I had to uh, write this report to Cambridge University Press, right? And I consider that as part of the study as well because I had to put into words what I had observed and my, 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 my own perceptions of the whole, the whole process. Um, so what are the learning points and implications? Um, this is, this is my, my perception, all right? I feel there, there isn't enough literature, there isn't enough research done on the subject. Um, I felt that most of the papers I read, they were saying the same thing. There wasn't much uh, uh, new. I, I couldn't really find anything that was striking and uh, you know, uh, innovative, let's say, or innovative. Uh, I also feel that um, these digital natives that we have in class, again, this is me, uh, this is Sergio speaking, yeah. they, they seem to be uh, mature digital natives. And what, what do I mean by that? I, I mean, these gadgets we have nowadays, these, all these apps, these uh, use very useful applications. They're not really that um, amazing anymore. We use them all the time. We use them every day. Uh, Google Maps, uh, Waze, the uh, conference app. We, 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 we're kind of taking them for granted in a way. And I feel students are doing the same. So when I came to class all excited and wanted to get their input, their take on the online component, they were like, we just did it. It's it's done, teacher. It's done. So there wasn't this excitement that, that I that I had in proposing the the task. So it's part of part of the job. It's just another tool. Uh, so that's what I mean by mature uh, digital natives. They they the, the, okay. It's part of our everyday lives now. It's just one more one more homework. Um, 
with, with our online component, they could follow the lessons day by day. So we had, the, 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 it, it was organized this way. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four. So they could really follow what we were doing in class. Uh, one advantage or disadvantage of that is that I could not veer too far from the program. And when I had to do it, I had to inform them. I'm changing this unit, I'm changing the order of the unit. So they, they had a very clear view of the program. They knew where we were going, they knew what was the next lesson. Um, now from, from the questionnaire, I asked them if they, they thought the, this, these activities done online should be made compulsory, because they, they are not compulsory now. And the overwhelming uh, reply was, no. No, we don't want it to be compulsory. We don't want it to be graded. It's, it's fine the way it is. I, I, I actually thought they would say, oh, yes, it might be a good idea to, to make it compulsory to, to be graded for that, but, but no. Um, I worked in two banks, right? And um, security is tight, and we could not use Wi-Fi. We could not use Wi-Fi. I could not use the online component in class. So I had to use these screenshots to show them where we were going and things that we were doing. So it's a bit of a, a problem. You're doing a project on the online component, and you can't use it in class. But then I, we may do with these screenshots and, and discussions. But then uh, I thought, may, maybe I can count on their mobile data plan. They could use their own personal mobile data plan. No, no, big no there. Uh, they were really, really hesitant to use it. And I, I couldn't really understand that. I, I, I didn't know how to ask them to, you know, why. Uh, but I tried many times to use, they, they would not use their own mobile data plan. Um, few of them used apps for practicing outside class, very few, like out of 25, two mentioned um, apps, uh, which was a bit shocking for me. I, I expected that they would come with all these uh, great apps that we have in the market, but, but no, only two of them actually used apps for practicing. And when, when uh, they needed help with, with uh, language, uh, almost all of them mentioned Google Translate, not uh, Oxford Dictionaries or, or Cambridge or these dictionaries we have online, or, or even uh, ling Lingui. Uh, no, Google Translate, almost 100%. Uh, and the, uh, like almost all of them again said that this online element was meant for consolidation. They saw it as cons consolidation. Uh, some of them even mentioned that the classroom, the lessons were sort of superficial, that we, ha we were in class to have a, a brief, an overview of what we were supposed to be doing, and at home, that was where the real work was done. And these, this, this was stated by quite a few of them. Um, one thing I, I, I read uh, is that we have a lot of research on um, teacher-learner interaction, learner-learner interaction, but we don't have much research on learner-content interaction. Uh, and nowadays, with this user-generated content experience, you know, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, my students felt that they, they wanted more control of the online component. They, they had almost no control. They, they could only listen to things. Some, some of the tasks, they could only listen once. They could not even repeat the tasks. So they really wanted... Um, more control, and I guess that stems from this user-generated content experience that they have. Um, my final recommendation, uh, this is a, a dream that I, I have. Uh, so get students to work online and, and quiz them uh, 
while they're doing it in real time. That would be my recommendation. That's it. Thank you. Um, they had uh, so the activities that mimic what we had in class, right? So there were uh, the usual fill in the gap activities, word order, um, reading comprehension. Uh, there was this sort of lab thing in which they had to record their voices and listen to a pre-recorded, uh, uh, you know, voice and, and compare. Um, but that was basically it. cognitive skills like raising students' awareness for the importance of exposing themselves to the target language outside the class or was a simple mandatory thing like homework? How did you work on their own beliefs about language learning? Mm. Well, I, I guess this, this was part of, this, of these uh, informal interviews I conducted. So I would bring uh, this meta uh, language, this meta cognitive discussion while having these interviews. So if, if they said it was, it was hard and they had to resort to Google Translate, uh, so we would discuss why that was and why did it happen. And, uh, but mainly in these informal interviews that I conducted, I, I could tackle that. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> the best question you could ask a researcher. Um, okay. Challenges. Oh boy. I guess. Um, well, I had Im immense support from Cambridge University Press, and um, um, they helped me a lot in, in everything. So, I, I guess mainly uh, I, I I was maybe a bit too ambitious. In, in my initial uh, question. And then I, I kind of narrow it down to students' perceptions so I, I could gather their own, their perceptions. Uh, students were re willing to contribute even more than I expected. So that was uh, quite interesting. Um, but maybe um, this, this idea of, of working, uh, of doing it in real time, I really wanted to, to use WhatsApp and, and Facebook but they weren't willing to, this is something else, they weren't willing to, to get into the personal thing. So, no, no, let's just do the online component teacher. We, we don't want to do the WhatsApp and the Facebook thing. Um, so I had to just go back to their perceptions in the questionnaire. Okay, we do have time for one more question. Yes, please. Your research is about students' perceptions. What about your own perception? Do you think that actually using this, uh, these components online did improve the students' uh, production and, and their outcomes? Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, the one thing about this, the, where I, this school where I worked is that they're really strict with um, their, their marking scheme and, and, and their tests, and we have tests like almost every month. And, uh, and this was sort of part of it. The, the online component was part of this testing scheme. They, they had to do some quizzes online that were in the online component. So um, they sort of took it really seriously. Um, so um, I, I can't say, you know, empirically I can't, I can't say that, but I'd say yes, my perception is yes. It impacted, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.